Yo guys, Low Coach Gaby here. So I wanted to make a very beginner friendly guide for Orn. In general, I want to make more of these guys because I feel like more than often there isn't really enough emphasis on social medias, on YouTube and on other like MOBA fire guides where people put emphasis on very beginner friendliness uh, to the point where even people that just now came to the game, even people that have like one month of experience you know they barely understand the game because it's a very complicated game right and the Orn is also the most complicated tank in fact it can be more complicated than the Kihana even though many farts smellers would tell you the opposite so let's just get into it what you want to do is just very simple you actually want to practice to that for now you just want to practice your mechanics when you pick up a new champion this can be applied to any champion obviously you need like normal game practice as well against real champions but you gotta remember as a very beginner you gotta practice your mechanics you gotta practice a little bit how you use your abilities perhaps your last hits if you really feel like which can be very important so in here you enter in a practice game you can add a bot, you can join either side, you can add any type of bot you want. In here it doesn't usually matter too much. Usually this doesn't matter too, too much. And then you can click on the start game. In here you can pick your champion as usual. So we're gonna pick Orn. Now these are your generic runes, rune wise. And this is something I will not overcomplicate. So if you go for, for now we just have this grass, presence of mind, legend, haze, bomb, plating, overgrowth, demolish setup with one adaptive force, two HP scalings, and I will slowly, uh, but surely, gonna explain step by step why we take these rooms, what's their functionality. For now, we're gonna take flash TP. Um, you can also take ignite TP, but for now, I don't really wanna overcomplicate anything. Step by step, I'm gonna explain his passive, his abilities. Um, a very, very easy guide, of, obviously, to his. Um, uh, builds because you got to know what to build because you can also craft items right you can craft items as Orn um, in the base so that also gonna help you oh not in the base I mean you can craft in the base but then doesn't make sense <laughs> you wanna craft in lane um, so you start with a solid D shield don't know how complicated most of the times this will be the useful item so for now we just start with a solid D shield okay most of the times you will start with D shield anyways like 99% actually <laughs> and uh, let's just start let's just start so Wally Bear is near he's actually his demigod brother um, for now uh, I want to talk from the passive to the other abilities so one can spend gold to forge non-consumable consumable items anywhere which means non-consumables things that you cannot actually like use for example you can't buy a control ward any of these potions any of these refillable potions, health potions, anything from this bar, you cannot build any consumables. But anything else you are allowed to build, so that's very important to know. So often as on, you want to buy a refillable in the base, refillable potion, right, or a control bar later on, because you will be able to craft items, but for now I don't want to super over complicate it, maybe I did a little bit complicated by saying that. Um, so Orn's passive allows you to craft items anywhere, but this can be a bit tricky. <laughs> this can be a bit tricky, which we're gonna get back to it very soon when the minions arrive in lane. And at level 13, you can get a upgrade uh, on any of your legendary items that's gonna give you 1000 gold value amount of extra stats, which means, for example, if I'm level 13, I'll be able to get like 1000 gold value amount of uh, more stats, for example, you put it in a good perspective, let's say like a chain versus 800 gold or like a cloth armor is just basically 300, so you can like map it out very easily, for example like for example, like three chain, three chain vests are basically 900 gold. So you get my point. But often, often if you're gonna buy an item like Tormail as an example, uh, those that thousand gold will be split up in like in these different pieces. So, for example, you're gonna have um, more HP and more armor, not only more armor as an example. Um, and you can also upgrade your teammates by clicking on them. It's very simple. And once you click on your teammates, don't walk anywhere which I'm going to show you guys really, really quickly as well once we get there, once we get to level 13. But I don't want to maximize out my abilities yet before we get to laning phase. Um, and Orn also gains like 10% additional bonus health armor magic resist from all sources. 
So this means that all sources, not only specifically items. So if you have like some type of champions that buff your armor, like Tariq, uh, a, a Earth Drake or whatnot, then those things will be also amplified. And uh, the value of that will be increased by 4% of these bonus stats per legendary items or upgraded. In total, you can upgrade 5. 5, right? Which means you can get 20 more percent. Because 5x4 is 20. Very easy. So this is like a more so scaling oriented passive. Early on you're gonna just get a little bit of a value out of it and later on it's gonna be way 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 better especially when you upgrade things. But this passive is useful regardless in lane as well. In lane this will be also very very useful. So Let's start about, let's talk about his skill, his other abilities for now. We respawn the minions. Alright, Wooly Bear. So Wooly Bear is actually jungle this time. Um, I just wait until the minions spawn really quick. Huh. huh. What? The architecture here is not <laughs> the minions have been spawned. So until then we have time to talk about this skew. So this skew has a decently long amount of range, which means you can get free trades off. Free trades means that you trade into your opponent, but this Garen or this Darius cannot reach you and you also slow them. So this skew is one of those like free trading abilities that also slows your opponent and clears uh, creates a pillar. Now the pillar is you can actually use it to knock up someone. For example, you can kill, you can eat, then boom. You can actually knock up your opponent. So this is actually very, very good to combine it with your E. But note, this will be also explained later on. It's not always a good idea to Q E in because people could either dash away cancel your dash in some way or just overwhelm you with their all-ins so just because you can it doesn't mean you should so just for now that's what i wanted to point out about his skill um beside of that this is the range tool that you're gonna use, use to farm with so for example if you want to cs this is how you want to cs in case you can't really step up to last in the minions because they're gonna be a Darius in the early levels as an example, but it could be many other things like a Warwick. If you step up to last hit minions, you're gonna be very very heavily traded into. So just by experience, you're gonna feel it. There will be some hard matchups where you just have to put emphasis on last hitting minions with your Q. And trade pattern wise into champions that win all ins into you. So one thing that I wanna explain it to you guys, your all in is not that strong as on unless you build items the point where you start check them because you build at a bramble vest or whatnot but for now uh you want to put emphasis on short trades the reasoning behind that is very simple for example if we look at passives and active abilities you know we're gonna go to darius we're gonna go to other champions as well like it can be set it can be set as well that's also fine it can be it can be so many, you know, like champions. I'm gonna point out two champions that dominantly will win always and all in into you early on. So, for example, Darius, right, has a very, very strong passive, so he can get 13, 13 to 30 amount of damage, right? And he also gets up to 60, right? He gets 65 up to 150 based on level physical damage over the duration, which can be quite a lot, right? And uh, when he does get his Noxian Mind, he does actually gain um, 30 to 230 based, da based, <laughs> based, ba based on level bonus attack damage and instantly applies hemorrhage stacks through his usual means. So he does get quite a lot of attack damage. Another example that's very good, Set. Set has HP based damage on his skill, his passive does actually give him some degree of healing. He does actually have a second basic attack that does actually do a decent amount of damage, plus obviously it's gonna be slightly faster. So these type of champions have a DPS passive, a DPS passive, and you don't. So this will help you to put a matchup in a good perspective. If, you, if I can win this all in, if I can't win this all in, if I can trade more heavily into this guy, if I can't. But even our opponent, Wooly Bear, as an example, you will not win a all in to him, you know, another example, another, 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 <laughs> another generic top laner. And in fact, by Conqueror, so if you see, for example, Conqueror, the rune itself on the enemy champion, you will not win all-ins. You will not win all-ins. 
this is conqueror this is conqueror it's a x you can see the enemy's runes when you press tab you can also move your mouse on it to read it but you can already see the icon so you will not win audience against this type of champions so just put emphasis on that body bear another really good example is passive gives him ramping up attack speed which also scales with ap it does provide variety magic damage on hit which means that even if you build armor he's still gonna deal damage to you his w is as strong as it looks like so it can heal insanely a lot in extended fights that's why you don't want to extend it this is as strong as it looks like if he gets his second rotation of his w and his e is also as strong as it looks like so it does lots of hp base damage gives him a gigantic shield gives him a decent amount of base damage so these are the type of champions you don't want to go extended into because we can see a, a pattern where we don't have a passive that's actually uh, strong enough um, to all in them because they got the dps oriented passive our other abilities are also quite often are not matching up to their base ability damage because often like you are more so team fight oriented more so scaling oriented and they don't orient yourself way too much towards duels you mainly want to put emphasis on duel see Z damage does a lot of damage right i just wanted you guys to see it so you got to know how to play around these type of kits how to kite them out how to short trade into them so you actually don't get out short traded because most of the times you will put emphasis on just on just short trading on just short trading okay guys just short trading now one of the things that you have to learn about short trading as well is that um this doesn't work anymore apparently guess i bugged it huh so basically like when you are facing an enemy champion when it comes down to your queue um you want to stack uh, but this will not showcase it properly, will it? The minions are stacked in a bad way. I'm gonna be bot lane, but the same logic applies to top lane as well. Uh, basically, you can uh, put down a dummy here. And um, you can basically attack a minion, right? You can basically attack a minion. Stack up the grasp. So every time before combat, you want to stack up grasp because it does provide you extra magic damage on hit. We can see it, right? And so what you want to do in quite a lot of matchups where you don't win those all-ins, Often you could queue, basic attack, walk away in case you don't win an extended fight. But it depends how hard can you, your opponent force himself into you to all in you. For example, some champs are good at forcing a all in into you. Some champs are not, like Wally Bear is an example. If you do sidestep his E, which is very easy, then he's not good at forcing an all in into you, but Darius can. So it will depend on the matchup. It will all depend on the matchup, to be honest. But the one thing that I want to really, really point out about your Q, uh, often you will just spam it, like you will just spam your Q, and you will not actually engage in other activities that even so using your W, because you may have to use your W defensively, because it does provide you a unstoppable. So I know a little bit I'm complicating it, but I really feel like I may have to, because uh, sometimes you will only use one tool to poke, but sometimes both. So there will be matchups where like Teemo for example any squishy champs you can use both very easily. Uh, but there will be some matchups where you need to throw a Q in. If Darius queues because he thinks he, 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 you will W, you got the space back down for a W as a example. So how you use your W has to be very efficient in combination with your Q. Uh, but again like I don't want to be too overcomplicated because I'm already doing it. Now let's move on to his W. Uh, his W applies a brittle, which also removes quite a lot of tenacity, 30 percentage, right? Of tenacity. And um, look at the thing, guys. So this will actually give you more knock up duration. This was a knock up enemy with my W on, and this is brittle. So we can visually see it did actually last longer. Uh, the other thing to understand about your W, it does actually give you unstoppable. Unstoppable means that you cannot be pushed in, you cannot be pushed, you cannot be pulled uh, in any directions. You still can be CC'd, for example, a stun like a gold card from Twisted Fate, or let's talk about a more generic one like a Dante on W, you can see on top lane, or even W. But it's still fine to cast this, this W, because you uh, actually like, your W is not a cancelable cast, because you're unstoppable. It's not one of those cancelable, cancelable casts, which just simply means that by, by the time you are actually stunned, you are about to be stunned, 
you can use this ability to actually um, diminish that stun value just because you're already casting something. So even though sometimes you will be stunned after the duration, you still got some damage done. So put emphasis on that, you can still get some damage done. And so often you want to use your W in combination with your Q. Especially if you're in a matchup where you're Q maxing. I'm gonna explain later on which ability went to max, but for now we're gonna just stick to like very very basic advice. Um, so often you're gonna use your W in combination with your Q, because people will walk away quite often if you're in a good position to trade into them. So to swing off your W, your brittle, it's called brittle when you mark your opponent, you need to use your Q and then, then you can like look for a very very easy W. So Q, W, very very easy. You can look for an E if you do win it at all in. If you don't win it at all in, you don't necessarily have to go in with your E. It just really depends on your matchup. I'm gonna hint it to you guys. There will be champs that could cancel your E and win an all-in into you. As an example, the set, Darius, right? So you gotta be very careful with certain champs or obviously Volibear as a very good example. So sometimes it can just be a bait for you to E in. But there are many squishy champions where you can actually use your E very easily, like Queen. But the issue is if she didn't use her E, your E can be a very reactable ability. She can react very easily to your E with her E. And so then you kind of have to actually like um, play around the fact that she may have E up because she could cancel it and then she's just gonna trade into you. But again, I <laughs> a little bit I overcomplicated it again because well, we just really explained our Major W, but then we really went off the path a little bit, obviously. <laughs> now, when it comes down to your W, as I said, like it's knocks knock back. So look, this Drake normally knocks me back. Ooh, la, we are knocked back, right? And uh, there are many champions, obviously, that can do the same thing. Now, let's remove the dummy because it's here. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how do you stop this type of knockbacks to happen, which will help you in lane, outside of lane, wherever you need to. So this deck will normally knock me back, right? If I use my W, this did not knock me back, as you can visually see. So I'm in a better position to trade into someone on top lane as an example. Now, let's, um, let's talk about... Um, our E, so we're gonna soon move on from our W. Another thing that you can use very easily your W to, obviously this is a wave clear tool. The wave clear tool basically just means that you can actually very easily just like use in combination with your other abilities on the whole wave, you know. So you wanna stack up the whole wave as much as possible and then you wanna W it, obviously not under tower. And then you can like wave clear it very very quickly um, with your QWE, especially if you have Bami already. Um, so it's also like one of those poke, wave clear, um, engage counters potentially abilities. That's why I, I said that Orn is one of the most complicated the tanks, company. where there is just Only simply so much depth to the champion company. to the point where it's just hard to understand for people. Now let's talk about Searing Charge. Now Searing Charge is also another interesting ability. So I showed it to you guys with the combination of the, my Q, so I don't necessarily have to use it right now. Um, if I do use my E, I can knock off anything that's inside of this radius. So it's very similar to a Malphitar, but on the base ability, that's obviously slower but a bit wider. Um, and so the important thing to understand about this ability is that you need to get, get uh, the triple brittle combo very easily done with this. So... This is what you have to practice to, uh, you spawn a dummy, right? And then what you want to do is just what you want to use your QWR, you want to basic this. Oh, I already forgot. Oh, no, 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 I messed up the combo, no, guys, I messed up the combo. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not how... <laughs> okay, I fucked it up. So, you Q, R, E... Oh, fuck, what the fuck did I mess up? No, no, I, this is what you shouldn't do, guys. I don't know how the hell I used to be the rank one one player. And you see, even as someone that's like more experienced, but it up somehow. And like that, guys. And exactly like that, you can get it done. So this is like one variation of it. But there could be a second one as well. For example, look. Get the basic. Oh, the fucking hitbox of this dark shit dummy. <laughs> Let me show it to you guys again. So, this dark shit dummy has some hitbox. 
God fucking damn that has a small Most hitbox. Usually this hits in game, but these dummies have insanely small hitboxes, by the way. So, <laughs> oh, no, 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 this is not the cleanest. This is not the cleanest. <laughs> Previously, this was not the cleanest, but you can also do this iteration of it as well. Very easily, if you already short play, then you can get the basic attack in between as well. Especially if you have grass pop, that's very important. So these are the two variations of your triple brittle combo, which can be very easily achieved. You can also do something like this if you don't want to upfront give up your your W. Right? If you don't want to upfront give up your W, then look for an E. So for example, you could delay your E in case something could cancel your E. Um, but basically, like, uh, too, again, like, too much over complications, I don't want to happen, but, um, <laughs> you just have to, you just have to understand some things in more depth as well, again. depending on how do you want to layer your abilities. For example, into some champs, you don't want to, like, as Darius, for example, you don't want to, like, Q into a ER, right, because then he could actually, like, cancel your dash. Uh, potentially with his E, uh, then it could be very, very fucked, especially if you like mess up your R as an example. Uh, so it's really matchup dependent, which I will show, you, show it to you guys later on. And another thing that you shouldn't be scared of, so your Q lasts 4 seconds, but even if your Q is about to expire, so by the time you cast, this has a slight cast time as you can see, and you also have to arrive to the pillar, uh, you shouldn't be scared, because as long as you see the pillar is up, even if it's about to expire, it will never expire if you cast your E. So there will be a slight amount of duration added to it. So you will always connect your E if your Q is up. Because even if it's about to expire, it will never expire. Even if even if it's like, it lasts 4 seconds, even if 3.9 seconds passed already. If you use your E in time, this time I didn't. But if you use your E in time, uh, you can actually, um, you can actually um, do that and... Now, the other thing about your E is that this is also a not cancelable cast. A uncancelable cast means that it's not cancelled by CC. So, for example, if Holy Bear were to stun me right now... Wait, he will stun me now, no? Uh, what the fuck is wrong with this bot? This guy is not very inclined to stun me. Like that, we can see the stun status was on me. So if someone were to stun you, you could also E away if your W is not up or perhaps you don't win an extended fight. Which you can also very easily do if a Pantheon jumps on you, Shen or whatnot. It's a taunt, but it's still gonna work against. You can still E away from it. Now there are some things that you could also like buffer your E into even into... Well, again, I'm gonna complicate but it, but just a teensy bit. There are some abilities that have knockdown effects like with Ari's charm. So it's a charm, but it actually does cancel dashes, but Rakan's charm doesn't. Which I know it will complicate it a little bit to you guys. But basically, there will be some abilities with knockdown effects, stuns and pulls. Pull effects that will actually cancel your E if you buffer it. But stuns will not cancel it and anything else in general. Though. I just wanted you guys to actually like, uh, <laughs> exactly like know that. Uh, now let me show you guys a very easy... This is one way to combo him. And this is a very easily spirit there combo on a real champion as well. Now, when it comes down to your um, E as well, you can also like buffer it after your uh, W, so you can make it slightly faster. You see, this looks slightly faster, so this is how you can sometimes surprise your opponents. Um, another thing that's like very very good to know about your E is that often you will use it defensively, often you will hold into it, which can be totally fine as a escape ability. And um, I think just uh, probably like one thing uh, you may have to be care careful of, like sometimes if you're trying to escape someone, if you queue like this, sometimes you will cut off your own escape path. If you queue like this or something, so sometimes you could be careful on that if they can counter your knock up and all in you. So sometimes you don't want to do that. As an example, um, 
Uh, what else is there to point? Not nah, too complicated. It will not be. Or I already showcased to you guys how the R works uh, really on, but it has more depth into it. For now, just in a very beginner friendly perspective as well. So your R is a very long range ability. You got to move your camera to actually like get a good R angle to very easily see where your R arrives. Now, once you're a very experienced on player, like you could literally hit this dummy without even moving your camera. Uh, even if they move in some directions, but as a very beginner, you will always have your camera. So always recommended to obviously have your camera on your opponents. So when you cast your ultimate, um, can be a, from a very long range, but it could be from a shorter range. Usually completely maximum range ultimates are not recommended. Actually, they're not recommended in a duel because you will not be able to catch up in time and to all in this guy, as we can see. So you don't want to go for maximum range ultimates unless you have an upfront all in. If you're cooperating with an Ari as, as an example, that can dash in and charm the opponent as a good example. So if you have follow up from your teammates and you want to all in someone, you can do this. But otherwise, you don't want to go for maximum range ultimates in lane because you will actually waste it completely. So it's long range, but it's not long range for lane. It's mainly meant to be useful for um, these type of situations uh, where you're looking to engage with your teammates if you're looking for a long range one. Usually in lane you also want to connect. Ah, this Wally Bear will not fuck up. I don't know what's up with these aggressive bots recently. So, so uh, in lane you mainly like want to use it in the triple brittle combination, which I showed you guys in all in scenarios. Uh, but from the other hand, you could also like very easily use it in the combination of your Q if you don't have other abilities up. But at least you wanna slow, like this is the minimum guys. At least like you wanna actually slow someone with your Q to get the potent R off, even if you didn't knock them up. So ideally at least you should get the slow off, um, which is actually like very very important to put emphasis on. Um, but when it comes down to your R as well, you can actually like retarget this R. For example, like it's like an Ezreal or something, right? And Ezreal jumps upwards and I have to position downwards and I can snipe him if he jumps upwards, for example. Usually as a beginner in lower ranks, people will jump up earlier on, later on in the game. Obviously you have to predict their movement, you know, their dashes, their flashes and whatnot. But for now, it's just like very, very good to understand that you can actually angle it. Or you can, if, if this guy dies, by the way, you can actually angle it into someone else, right? For example, we, like, I don't know, like maybe three people are focusing this guy in your team. It's very good for you to re redirect your R. So we are focusing this guy. Oh, but this guy is dead already. Oh no, but I don't want to waste my R. And you can actually R the other guy. So you can actually redirect it. You can also like R backwards as well if someone dashes behind you. And the cool, th cool thing about your R, guys, is that you can actually like R very, very late, which can be very unexpected for your opponents, like that. So it looked like my R went through me, but if you can catch the butt of the ram, it will still, it will still knock back. So all you have to do is just catch the butt of the ram, because this has a very hit big hitbox to like recast. So you can get a very, very quick recast off actually, if you notice, guys. Oh, I use it slightly late. But you can actually get a very, very late recast. You can also get a slightly earlier one as well than the usual. So, before it's completely in range, you can cast your R and boom, it will go back. Again, same logic. You see, like we casted it earlier before it was in my hitbox, in my range. But because this has a, like a fat amount of range, then it will actually connect. Um, so it has a very, very big hitbox to work with. Now another thing to understand is people will CC you, so if they have uh, too much CC, obviously I'm going to talk about Merc that soon, uh, if they have too much CC, if they have this type of form of CC as Wooly Bear had, he stun. So if he stuns me when I cast my R, uh, I will not be able to get my R off, so what you want to do against this low range, short range, stunning champs like Wooly Bear, you want to R them, and you don't want to walk into them completely, you want to walk a little bit back, so you can actually get your clock up done as an example. So people will not stun you, Darius will not pull you as an example, Seth will not start, stun you or whatnot. So you wanna space a little bit back. And then you can get your combo off anyway, so you don't have to be completely into, into their face. Just because if you are, you walk a little bit back from their CC, you still can get your combo off. So again, just very simple, you know, if you are, just stay at your distance, use your E, space it off, W whatnot. 
and then you are good to go as an example so that's something very important to follow up because otherwise you could completely base your art now the other good thing to know about your art there are some very non-interactive matchups which means i don't get to kill my opponent my opponent doesn't get to kill me uh, usually those matchups are either because you are counter picked by a bruiser early on or it's a shen as an example or whatnot so you can't actually like impact super well top lane uh, then what you want to do you want to walk downwards walk downwards walk downwards now if your jungler is fighting the grabs and there will be a fight at the grab pit then you can follow it up but you could also like go mid lane and just R the mid laner and get a kill on it because Ons ultimate is a very very dangerous R so that's what you could put emphasis on actually just to uh, simply simply put you can just like gank someone else so your R is not permanently up without being able to use it for anything now often if they have dashes you may have to like ro like you, you don't always want to R like this obviously like you, stay, you R you stay in one spot you may want to position in a direction which allows you to R in a way to um, to actually like catch their dash if you see them dashing meantime your R goes off but predicting predicting I wouldn't recommend for now we just got to know how to use it normally um, that's like another that's a bit more complicated which I don't want to like again super complicated for you guys um, now that uh, we got how the base abilities work I just uh, simply want to talk about um, uh, basically the items, the emphasis on runes, you know, so you can be actually harder matchups, right? So you can actually put emphasis on a uh, little bit of everything as a beginner. So this is the first part of the ability presentation. And um, now I want to present to you guys different runes beside the generic grasp. And also like finally some real action, some matchup explanation on how do you beat certain matchups that are more difficult for you guys not for me but it's kind of like for beginners it will be very hard to deal with all right guys so i want to show you it to you guys how to deal with a harder matchup um, as an example darius in our case scenario i played uh, against him before so you're just gonna go very quickly through obviously like what do you need to do in here i do have phase rush and the second um so i have basically have uh, phase rush and secondary I do also have, uh, uh, I don't want to complicate it super a lot guys, but in here basically I had uh, Phaser Rush, Transcendence, Mana Flow Band, uh, Scorch with the 2% mobility rune from the shards, and secondary I had, uh, I do believe this time I tried Last Stand with Presence of Mind, but normally instead of Last Stand you can get Legend Haste, because this allows you to space his abilities way more easily if you have the two percent rune instead of the hp scaling one i'm gonna show it to you guys very quickly where you can find that um i don't even know where to find it guys how much <laughs> just kidding just playing so the two percent rune is here the two percent mobility rune so it will look like this against darius right it will look like this okay in here I feel like I should get the cooldown rune, but too, too complicated, it shouldn't be for now. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of delayed, so you have to time it well. And also often if you just dash in, just to like, if counter is kill damage, you're gonna be stat checked anyway, so you need your dash to get out actually. That's what I was talking about in the video. So you guys gonna see it as well as a real, real example, besides all that much amount of theory. Um, in here the game begins now in higher ranks people will try to zone you off the first three minions at the beginning of the game uh, in lower ranks people will not be bothered they will just nest in the minions so you can just step up kill the minions and uh, basically don't don't uh, basically don't want to like last it at all into some champs like Darius as I do because if you do so then what's gonna happen is well, oh, I even missed my Q a little bit then what's gonna happen the guy could actually basic attack W U perhaps look for a good all-in. In here this guy actually Q started, they could Q or W start, in lower ranks I think most of the times they will W start. Uh, they will also potentially cheese you in a push, which I will talk later on about. Again, we can see I'm not even stepping up, that's how strong that is actually, because he does have level 2, so he has two abilities, and his passive is way more useful in combat, as I showed you guys before. So this is what I want to like show it to you guys. This is how you last it under tower. You got to know your last hits a little bit. Then in here again, just put emphasis on last hitting. 
as much as possible using your abilities to hit two birds with one rock so in here it's actually fine to step up because i had phase rush but if you wouldn't have to you, it's it's kind of hard to actually basic that off because if you do so you could catch a good basic wq with you and god that would not be okay in here i just w basic the minion so you want to use your mana you want to use your abilities even under tower so this is how you last it under tower as you can see we last it to the cannon we kill the whole thing so even like learning how to last it under tower or even outside of the tower or to last it in a way that you poke as well or to last it in a way that you actually don't get traded into or to last it in a way that you craft uh, that you don't lose cs out that's why i said like this can get very very complicated it's actually way more complicated than it looks like so i didn't want it to like really information bomb you guys and now that there is no minions to be last seated darius doesn't trade into me i buy a ruby crystal for bummy so i can disengage easily from his all-in just by hitting a qw and then he does walk away from my brittle and so often echo is coming and so often you're not supposed to beat your opponent that's way stronger than you early on as a, as a, alone because you have a lot of cc so you have your e knock up your q slow even early on before you get your r and you can actually set up a gank very very nicely so very easily you can set up a gank uh for your jungler but in here the guy did flash away the guy did actually use his ghost so he used two summoner spells that he could normally all in you with more ease so this often opens up like better opportunities to all in your opponent if they give up certain uh combat summoner spells right so it means it's csing is a bit easier just simply like the quality of life is just better on top lane when they have those abilities on cooldown in here we can see we have zero mana you can't really like craft uh, mana potions health they don't even exist anymore and in here we just want to finish our bami cinder bami cinder it will provide you a little bit of aoe for more proper wave clear helps a little bit around grabs to clear them faster and um, again just put emphasis on proking phase rush a little bit more smoother so one w basic bummy procs you know you can literally proc your phase rush so so easily actually so so easily um so it means that you can use more aggressively your w just because like uh that is can't all in you because normally like if you would go grasp you kind of have to spare your w for his e which is more of a reaction time check but regardless if you can react it or not it's usually way better for you if you go actually phase rush like grasp is just very bad against these type of matchups okay so we do actually get most of the last hits up as we can visually see this is how you farm with bummy cinder so you want to burn them but only a little bit and then you want to last hit them because if you sit on the minions with bummy cinder uh, you will not be able to actually like last hit them properly because they will get burned too much and you will not get the proper last hit off in here this was just a proxy but don't be bothered too much about this proxy because uh, this will not happen in lower ranks often it's just an int as well in higher ranks because people often don't even know how to proxy or when to but uh, don't get bothered by this play for now this will not happen in your lower ranks um in here we can see that darius did die so when darius is dead he cannot freeze if you push he cannot freeze if you push just because like what's gonna happen is that he cannot catch up to a right in time in lane and we remember he doesn't have flash he doesn't have flash it's very important to time his ghost timer as well because sometimes he could all in you often he couldn't depends on the scenario situation but be careful if he does have ghost up and you may have cooldowns because he could all in you and in here guys what do i do i walk downwards there's not a lot to do in lane so i do actually ward here to see if the enemy mid laner is roaming into me the enemy jungler perhaps could gank from the reverse side so it's actually a very very nice war to also see the objective so if there is not much to do in lane then you want to basically um you just ward and in here we don't lose any cs because the guy was start pushing in here i pretend i hold the wave so you want to hold the wave on your side against all in champs even even if you're not freezing it's fine because like if you hold the wave on your side what they want to do they want to all in so this is your happy spot and what you want to do you want to short trade and disengage as fast as possible on that tower so if they don't have space to all in you then they can't really like get enough value out of their kits because this is what i want to do i want to short trade i want to qw and i don't want to like trade 
heavily which he wants to do right and so if you can do this if you can hold the wave on your side even if it wouldn't freeze you can actually trade more smoothly even if you don't have phase rush so emphasis on not having phase rush up because it does have a longer cooldown earlier on later on it does shrink by a lot and in here you also want to use your pings so it depends how beginner you are if you know how pings are working you should use your pings and um, assess just say that either type that your opponent is missing but if you don't know how to use them that's fine in here again guys what did i show you in the practice tool basic attack in between w and this is how you get your combo of triple brittle combo very important to know so most of the time if your opponent lost like Let's say like 70%, 70 percent 70 ish percent of their hp bar that's a consistent amount so like we see like this much amount 70 around 70 percent that's gonna be consistent and they don't have some type of upfront counter play to your or like a gwen w or whatnot or not gwen w i guess if you knock her up it wouldn't matter but if they don't have any upfront counter for your all-in or any type of like some insane resisting abilities you know then um you can actually very easily all in them and this Gladius does only have a healing on his Q which he cannot connect so that just generally means squishy champs like Darius as an example or Timo or whatnot will be very very easily all in you know see and very very easy even with phasers you get that you see like my W also dealt a little bit overkill amount of damage there, right? Now, in here we do actually finish our uh, Bami Cinder very, very soon, but I think I didn't, because I think Bami is kind of useless. So I think I went something else instead, because you just want to get Bami, I do believe. I think you just want to get Bami, actually, so I didn't actually rush the whole thing. Build's going to be obviously explained later on. Basics should be, I think should be fine to provide me the plate very easily should be fine and now we do get the plate with dupi actually so plate that would be sweet video. actually into both plate that is fine finishing sunfire is very bad so don't ever finish sunfire yeah don't finish you it. know what uh, it's trash honestly it's one of the trash easiest items right now and here we arrive back in lane and so you can cooperate with your jungler as well if it ever ganks you you got to really really step up but if you know sometimes this is by the way in high gear look these things like this shouldn't really happen but uh, sometimes if your jungler is really really hard trying to like force a gank sometimes you got to go with it if you can kill darius but there is a word where darius gets a double kill on you guys if he's very very fat if he's very ahead or maybe gets enough amount of stacks of you so this can get a little bit more complicated on the um, on the lead level of darius on how you guys play it, how quickly can you kill Darius, because Darius has to be killed very, very quickly. If you don't kill Darius very, very quickly, then, oh boy, you may be fucked a bit. You may gonna be fucked a bit, because uh, in here I also spaced his um, Q, then I went in with the Knock up W team. It can be a little bit complicated to do, but same combo, he loses a lot of HP, we all in him, he flashes, we accept the fact that he does flash, we pretend with W, space is E, space is Q as well, so I think this is a bit more complicated for beginners. But um, this is how well you have to like play to maximize out your place. Because uh, get, getting catched by his Q does a lot of damage because his E can provide him like like 40 amount of like armor penetration if it's maxed out. So even armor does not do super a lot into Darius. It's helpful, but it does actually get diminished. And his Q also heals, right? It does a lot of damage. So you kind of want to avoid those because his Q is actually the most dangerous ability in terms of range poke that he has in his kit. In here again same thing you don't want to get extended into him i actually messed up a bit my combo but it's fine because echo is here your jungler shows up finishes the guy off so even into champs you wouldn't win an extended fight if your jungler is around that can be evened out that can be played around very very easily um okay so we do actually get the wave in you got the wave in you don't have much pushing power without demolish we see briar so you could actually go for one Played for consistency reasons, you can actually watch out where the enemy mid and the enemy obviously like uh, jungler is. If you have demolish and your opponent is dead, you could greet for more if you have TP and you don't have to TP anywhere after packing. But um, you know, we, we just gonna go by if you see. We just gonna go simply go by with the fact that if you see the enemy mid, if you see the enemy jungler, you could greet for more. Um, but if you don't see them don't you're just gonna go buy that okay for now 
not specific tempo timings or not specific like timings towards like a certain objective after pre-calling or whatnot you know like it doesn't really have to be like super super duper over over complicated for no reason and this is another like real example where you can use your w so when she jumps in briar she, her q has a stunning ability and that's where you want a w we can see i was stunned for a very little bit if you guys spotted it and that's that's what like i uh, diminished with my w because if you are in if, if you are casting something that's uncancelable you can actually win some time during during the time you're stunned because it goes up anyways and in here I did build Thormail, but this was before nerfs, but often this is still the most ideal if you require some reflection damage against uh, basic attackers and anti-heal, which I do require both this game. I'm also showcasing my runes, but instead of last hands, this was just an experimental thing. Instead of like last stand obviously like you wanna go legend haste. But I would say for beginners, I would more so lean towards bone plating and overgrowth, honestly, into the Arivus. I just like I'm more experienced and I can greet for this, but otherwise I would just recommend other ones because this is gonna be it's gonna be way harder for you guys to like manage to win your matchup with, so be careful on that. Um and we can see slowly but surely we are winning this matchup. So I just wanted to show you guys the laning phase because after the laning phase, that is actually kind of useless. That's the thing about like some top laners, like they can pressure you, they can potentially beat you, but you guys can see I can win even like supposed to be hard matchups. It's not really a hard matchup if you play phase rush. Um, then after after mid late game Darius just turns out to be useless because sadly the champion's kit is not very flexible, he doesn't have any dashes. Damage wise he has damage but not enough. Um then the other problems that he can obviously is in mobility, he's um, he doesn't actually have like any good amount of defensive stats besides his Q healing, which is often not enough. So it just kind of turns out to be this kind of useless type of uh, champion in here. I do get gank. We, we see we got stunned, but our E is not cancelable as I showcased it to you guys. And because my E is not cancelable, uh, we got out of that stun. So this is how you can get out of stun. So if you're one of those players that came of Heroes of the Storm as an example in that game, uh, dashes and abilities <coughs> cast do actually get cancelled by stuns. If people didn't know. the Tormail, brought the Tormail and in here the hard part is over, so mainly we placed emphasis on like how to play the early game, how to play the uh, hard parts of this matchup, now I don't wanna, seriously I don't wanna like over complicate it on what do you do in mid late game and whatnot. often, like I, I just gonna tell it to you guys, often as, as, as uh, for keeping it simple you know, so I sometimes I already complicated it too much, Often you wanna play with your team because you are a team fight oriented champ, which means that you wanna walk up with your team, fight for objectives. Sometimes you can clear out side waves if you fa face a split pusher like a Trindamir that's not super good in team fights. So you can actually sit on the side lane, last hit the minions. The side lane usually means bot lane, but it could be top lane as well, depends which lane they are splitting. And uh, Often these type of champs that split push like Gar and Trindam, you don't have teleport, so it means that you can actually wave clear, protect your tower, if you don't win an all-in by chance, if you're not strong enough, obviously. And then what you can do is that you can TP, but they don't have teleport. Trindam, you can't even cancel your TP as an example, you can teleport for Baron as an example, uh, mainly for Baron, mainly for Drakes, depends which objective is up. And then you can actually like out impact your opponent because you can be present at the fight all in them with your ultimate really good team fight oriented champion and then um you'll be able to like uh, turn over a fight completely and your team got basically like some kills of that you can recall them for Trindamir or someone else could and defend the bot tower right but it's often it's worth to like give away one bot tower for a baron for some kills around baron as a example Okay, now let's talk about uh, another hard matchup setting, potentially, potentially I think we can find some of these harder, harder, harder matchups, right, uh, that people uh, may may gonna struggle with, obviously, uh, we, could show, we could show another matchup I feel like, a little bit of another matchup, so we can, uh, we can actually just uh, 
showcase a little bit more on like the mechanical side. This was like Grandmaster one year ago, but mechanically, mechanically, I'm gonna hint it to you guys before Fiora was somewhat harder actually, but uh, basically like on mechanically, you just do the same thing. Um, so another like Fiora versus Orn type of matchup that's supposed to be very very hard. In here, I showcase it to you guys on like Yang Chang a second. I, uh Truth to be told, there isn't really like an easy way to beat Fiora because Fiora is one of those champions God, what's quite up? similar this was to my old mic. Literally forces every matchup to be a skill matchup. One of the important things is to watch out for to not play on pattern. Also, let's see what I do when the patterns game starts. Are very, so uh, patterns are gonna talk instead of my old self because uh, the thing to understand about uh, Fiora is that you like <coughs> all things you can't really win because of your passive. So her passive does actually provide her healing and HP based through damage. So you can't win all ins because uh, her Q is also very spammy compared to yours. I'm gonna show it to you guys so you guys can see it with your eye. <coughs> okay. So we can see that she does HP based through damage that scales with 80. Proc some Q as well. Does actually heal. And her Q is a very spammy ability because 50% of the cooldown is actually reduced. Um, if it hits a if it hits a champion, a minion, or whatnot, so that's very very important to know. Uh, now the matchup starts out, and and the vitals are also rotating around your body, which means that uh, if it's behind you, you wanna go for a basic attack. Q, you wanna walk back. Sometimes you don't even wanna Q because it's a bit mind gamey because she could actually Q, and sidestep your Q and basic into you. So there is like a basic attack difference, range difference. I have one, 175, she has only 150 as a example. So you kind of have to like basic walk back because otherwise she will actually like queue through you. So this is what she wanted to do. She wants to queue through your body and get this vital proc to get her healing and mobility. But you can make her passive completely useless if it's behind you. If it's in a known preferred position, for example, the preferred position is in front of you, which basically she presses Q and procs it. <coughs> but if it's, if it's in a known preferred spot, then she has to rotate around your body. If it's behind you, that's the worst one. And so what you want to like do around it, you want to like rotate your body around it, which is kind of hard for beginners. But I still wanted to like sort of showcase it to you guys because her, she got zero passive procs. So basically, if we can play around it, it will not always be possible depending on which side it is, right? North, east, south, or west direction. But when it's in a unfavored direction, you can play very well around it to the point where she gets little to no value out of it. So basically, both of us have no passives then that are super useful in these fights, but we do have a grasp and few that can out short trade her. <coughs> you can see the same thing. We have a little bit more basic range. So we actually could get a very, very easy, um, very, very easy, like basic off and walk back. And when you walk back and people want to basic attack you, uh, it's the thing is like you are able to like walk back a little bit because you can bait them also into your minions. That's the thing. So she will be traded into by your minions as well. What is the old game talking about here? So for auto attack, right? You want to have a grasp up and then swing in an auto attack as I did, right? Now she healed, of course, but I dealt extra damage. So that healing is going to be a bit... It's especially important to go for heavier trades if uh, your jungle is patting towards you. Because if you lose this amount of... I mean, this is a good trade in general, these trades. But it, there's just quite a lot of emphasis like uh, on going for... Th this is, like It's not the best to trade into a grasp and passive. But if she's going lower and lower on HP and your jungle pads into you, then you can take one of those trades, even though they're not the best, because they could give you all-in angles, and they could also give you uh, op uh, opportunities for your jungler to gang or dive. Uh, more so when you go higher, your jungler higher rank, uh, your jungler will actually like gank you. We also have Ignite, so this time i also going to showcase how to use Ignite as well. <coughs> in a matchup, you also want to ward, you know, you want to go downwards ward. They didn't exactly know where Nuno was in game, so you want to go for a deep ward against some junglers. Um, against some junglers, you want to go for a bit more of a 
we park us it's hard to like spot them in time before they just snowball charges into you know and in the right i also use my uh e to trade into her because like normally i don't want to use e aggressively but she's one level down and i have a gigantic minion wave i won most of the short trades earlier on so <coughs> it just really comes down to you know that um And again, like same thing happens, so she does actually use her W, you wanna walk away. So you wanna either cancel your basic with S, or you wanna walk away more ideally, so her W doesn't even hit. And uh, watch out, so this is her parry by the way. So if some people didn't know, uh, that's how it looks like when she parries. This is the parry, does 110 damage, decent blood damage. And it says, <coughs> it says uh, Fiora stuns the target for the same duration so it, it can be a two second stun it's a very long stun if she can actually uh over the first zero to six seconds of the duration fewer up poises to strike after which she sends a shockwave with her sword in a line so it just simply means that uh once she like enters into this defensive stance she do doesn't only like stuns you if you try to cc her but also but also guys um <coughs> also guys she gonna actually like be invulnerable for the time so be careful on her w you got the mind game it the projectile the cast of it <coughs> it can be dangerous regardless and in here we can see we sidestep it we hit our w off um just there will be abilities like this is not only fiora specific this is something you have to learn against this like abilities that have to sort of charge up and uh, um they have somewhat of a cast time you know defensive ability set w same logic applies you don't want to like w your basic off because if you went if you short trade that before hand uh, he could w and uh he could uh get the shield get uh through damage which is way more damage than fewer as w and he gonna get a massive shield which also gonna protect him in the same actual way as fewer as uh <coughs> as fewer as uh, obviously like W does so be very very careful on that again mind game her W but sometimes you don't want to do that because they know it but this is a bit more mind gamey so that's why like that's why I said there isn't around some champs you're gonna take some mind games to beat them honestly because there's like no pattern way of beating someone uh, when it comes down to a champion like Fiora just because like how their champion functions um but often, like you just want to emphasis, put emphasis on just like scaling. It's fi it's totally fine if if these harder matchups, if you if you find Fiora, if you find Darius to be a harder matchup, it's also totally fine <coughs> if you just want to scale. You know, and the same thing we can see the line of our W, and we want to walk away. I should then walk a little bit upwards like this actually, so I can basic my W up more smoothly. But I guess I messed up a little bit my movement. <coughs> <coughs> And just want to like basic attack it. The same logic could apply sometimes to Darius. Like sometimes you may not want to basic attack your W off. Sometimes you want to maybe walk in there a little bit inside of his Q. So not always like, not always like last hitting your W, right? Basic attacking your W off, your brittle. It can be a good idea. Just wanted to show off some high gilo perspective as well. How to deal with harder matchups. <coughs> Because the truth is, most of the Fioras players that smash you, they are not that smart. The issue is that you play in a very pattern way, to the point where they are observing it very, very easily. Sometimes they aren't even. And uh, basically, then they are using their W to counter your CC. And uh, <coughs> your crowd control. Your So CC means crowd control, stunning abilities. Um, which just simply means that you will not be able to um, play the game properly <coughs> in here walk back you know just observe how i last it just observe how i trade into her often you just gotta see it with your own eyes like how do you trade how do i trade how do better own players trade than you and you can see that there is like some csing difference there is some like ability usage difference <coughs> ability layering ability you know like basically ability bluffing ability usage like we can see it's just so much so much like skill so much like mechanics sometimes 
just by observing things, you know, just by asking questions, you know, like you got to sometimes ask questions like why when you watch someone says replay, when you watch someone says guys, you know, like why why do they start, why do they play in a certain way, you know, why do they do a certain thing and often it, quite a lot it revolves around how do you play around my opponent's kit, you know, how do you um, <coughs> counter prepare with that um, Fiora, right, how do you deal with her? <coughs> and in here I keep going for some heavy trades because mastery is around, they do have ignite and orb. So with ignite you are more dangerous than usual, plus we have some items crafted out of the earlier advantage. Because as Orn, you tend to be more ahead than other champions, because uh, if you get the CS advantage or something, you can build items and your opponent can't, so good to know. <coughs> and here she did give up her Q, uh, I mean W. A little bit I messed it up though, a little bit I messed it up though, because like she still had her Q, so... But it was fine, because like she literally walked into the tower, then I eat her, I could actually get out, but... <clears throat> In here it's also fine by the way, dying, because like... I didn't even die, yeah, I'm too tanky. No, actually, I think I had too much, I had a... Uh... Yeah, actually I even had biscuits, I wouldn't die there, yeah. There's no way I would die there, but these type of dives... I would tell you, you could limit test your dives, but as a complete beginner, I would not do this, you know. So if you are like somewhat more over the beginner level, you know your combos, uh, you know how to connect your abilities in a good order to like kill your opponent as fast as possible, you should do it. As a complete beginner, this is highly unrecommended because you're gonna die like probably like 10 times trying to do this. <coughs> so you gotta get your, you gotta get your, uh, um, mechanics going first. And in here, again, like, Fiora is another one of those champs that's not gonna be super useful outside of laning phase if she doesn't get a certain acceleration. She's gonna side lane mostly, but it takes forever for her to scale and to be useful. And at this point, it's just such an easy smash for you. Another matchup that uh, eventually she will outscale you, so I would be still concerned about Fiora, but it takes her quite a lot of items. Like, literally, she needs, like, three, two items till she can actually deal with you, like at 3 items she usually outscales you, but at 2 items you can still side lane very very easily into her. Now if things are very very hard, if you have like maybe like a, a anivy or something to her the side lane or something else that has AoE damage, maybe if Fiora doesn't go Soulbreaker, then <coughs> they can very easily hold it and TP for a fight, if you cannot hold it as an example. But we place some emphasis on harder matchups. Now let's guys now let's talk about uh, itemizations. What to build, what to not build. Alright guys, so this can get a little bit more complicated, so feel free to take screenshots. Take screenshots. So in here we face a range top, so into range and midi tops and perhaps AP tops or strong all in tops, so you're gonna have different runes. But in here we do face a vein. So into vein, you can take two runes. If you are in higher ranks. You take Unsealed Spellbook, but you don't care about this at all, for now it doesn't even exist for you. You wanna take Summon AD, very very good rune, you don't wanna go for Comet, because she could potentially sidestep your Comet with her Q, so it's a bit more recommended AD with the combination of a good, 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 good Bramble Blast. Now, your secondary runes are very very simple, <coughs> you just wanna go for uh, basically Second Wind, or ideally, like I would say biscuits could be a bit more ideal with approach velocity, so you have the mobility going. With, um, ideally for more poking power, you could also put emphasis on double adaptive force, because she anyways has HP based through damage, so this is the generic uh, setup you can get against ranged AD champs, ranged AD champs, right? <coughs> so for now we can also pick Orn. Alright, we picked on, and so these are the runes, take a screenshot of it, AD range champs, queen, uh, vein, whatnot you're gonna face, sometimes we have a revolution or whatnot people play in lower ranks, and, um, <coughs> and here we can see that the reasoning why you take AD is because comet could be sidestep, summon AD gives you actually like poking power on your ranged abilities like your Q and W, your Q and W, you start with the solid E shield, and usually level 1 obviously will not have D shield. Obviously you will not have D shield, but <coughs> and not D shield, fuck I mean Bramble Vest. But we're gonna buy Bramble Vest just to showcase it to you guys with the combination of summon AD and Bramble Vest what you can accomplish. Often main players will go little tempo or uh, 
complete, depends on the player, but most of the times I think they will go lethal. And so this is what like Bramble the best does with the combination of uh, Samoneri. <coughs> Baratus Vayne doesn't know how to basic attack or what. See, and we can see some reflection damage. So because she basic attacks me, she does get actually some damage on her from Bramble West, because on attacks, this does apply Grievous Wounds, which means it's basically anti-heal, they heal 40% less, and also some Reflection damage, and also a, some 80 does proc on them. <coughs> you could also arguably proc this with um, your other abilities, which can be totally fine, but sometimes you may not be able to be liable to hit them, sometimes you may miss them. So I would say in that case scenario, it, it's very useful armor-wise as well, obviously. Not want to cool off, so this is this is what you wanna nice. combine into ranged matchups, AD range matchups. Okay, now we got it. <coughs> um, again, harder matchups as Darius. I showed it before to you guys. Feel free to take a screenshot. Now, when it comes down to like the reasoning why you take phase rush is to escape people, they are all in. So if they, it also so phase rush it doesn't only provide you a burst of speed, it also provides you 75 percentage effective effectiveness um, uh, of slower resistance, and it also provides you a burst of speed. So if champions win a extended fight into you, such as uh, <coughs> such as Darius, you want to go for phase rush so you can short trade and escape smoothly disengage smoothly from their all-ins which is very 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 important guys <laughs> this is like insanely important for you to get it against harder matchups like that um before you could also get it into gwen but now that she got nerfed it's very easy to go grasp into her as an other example so usually against these harder matchups 100 percent i would just put emphasis on just getting this phaser rolling um just so we can get that very very smooth disengage. Now, from the other hand, grasp, grasp. I already showed it to you guys. This is your generic rune phase. This is the type. This is the type of thing you're gonna take into other tanks most of the times. Uh, second win into poking champions after taking damage from an enemy. You're gonna heal and bomb plating against champions that have rather strong all-ins, but this has more cooldown, so it depends how many ranged abilities they have, if they have ranged abilities and they procure bomb plating easily, then you should go for second win, if the matchup is free, go conditioning, but you never gonna go for conditioning, and never go for it either, but some games you could, but never go for that, as a beginner, overgrowth always, demolish always, um, <clears throat> even in matchups here you get to hardly push, because out of these you will not get much value out of a zone, so I will just put emphasis on that. Now, your secondary ro runes, it's very easy, you know, pull down into mana management, this is your generic rune set. Sometimes if you're in a scaling matchup, it's fine to get this. Speed rune only in matchups where you need to space, but you just don't even go for it, because it's just gonna complicate it for you. Um, <clears throat> Then again, like you could also go scaling, mobility, magical footwear, so into matchups that's not super interactive. You could go something like this as well. Approach velocity will just allow you to like uh, connect more easily, a, uh, basically like connect the E more easily after an or short trade more properly after hitting a Q into a basic, so it allows you to get way more better trades off, you know, after a Q. Uh, also provides you a slight amount of mobility into like some harder matchups potentially like uh, Aatrox because if you move like sideways fo forwards and you can sidestep his Q more easily as an example <coughs> so it's also gonna provide you a slight more um, mobility to sort of play around the abilities and magical footwear is just like scaling boots if you don't intend to buy boots early on into non-interactive matchups, but you can also get biscuits into a harder matchup, biscuits approach velocity. <coughs> but cooldown and basically like mana management into like bullet sponge champs like like Karen, you know. <coughs> that not necessarily gonna have the best all in into you. Um okay now we got this. Uh there is this one, there's this forbidden one. This is like it's like some forbidden jutsu from the leaf village, which you don't care about unless you're in a very high rank, but even in higher ranks you have better alternatives. So about this you forever you don't really you don't really care. Now alternatively there aren't other like alt runes you can go for these days, except the ones that I mainly pointed out. Even after Shook is often not that great, so I think 
that's it for now feel free to take those screenshots free feel free to like use those use that information um so that's it for now about the runes now let's make some item sets as well so runes and items in one uh let's rename it orn let me rename it we can rename it orn orn versus <coughs> ap AP top right so against ap top lane champions um we wanna scrap all of this right we wanna scrap all of this if we can that's perfect so again very easy like take a screenshot of this as well um <clears throat> so usually this shield usually you know i mean maybe i don't even have to add it because this is something you buy by default but whatever uh, <clears throat> then you're gonna get a abyssal mask so put emphasis on abyssal mask this will provide you 30 percentage magic uh, resistance reduction which means that your w's arms will deal way more damage because it deals percentage amount of damage cooldown magic resistance is, is very very useful 300 hp as well so this is very very cheap very useful against the ap champs <coughs> that you can actually dominate that you can beat very easily especially good if you get more ap champs beside you in lane so i would say champs that you can beat more easily you should go definitely like very very easily a good abyssal mask into you because this will provide you very easy like kill windows um again so i would say more so scaling oriented more so hard matchups if they have multiple ap champs then you can go either canic Rokan or abyssal so both can be fine can I name it <coughs> Even so Gragas if he plays well, right? Even so Gragas, right? Uh, as an example, then you can also get quite often into like AP champs. Most of the AP champs tend to actually have CC in their kit and not only magic damage. So Mark Threads provides you mobility, it provides you tenacity. Uh, so this will be good against the APCC champs like Cannon as an example, Gragas and whatnot. So against the APCC champs, this will be very, very useful. <coughs> And overall, you don't want to like put build way too much into AP tanks or AP champs in general. Only one, usually only one item at a time, unless the enemy team is like dominantly AP, like they have like four AP or something, and like maybe the rest of them have mixed AP damage. But usually, you only want to get like one of these. Then you just want to build situation into the enemy champion. So it really depends on your needs. Um, at at this point, it's just like basically like it's just like dependent like it's just situational for example i'm gonna add the situational items in here you know like and then we just rename it so it will be more easy for you guys to understand it versus matches. <coughs> okay now the rest of the items as i said jack show can provide value into like ap ad but this is something you may gonna get but only very later on into the game usually it's not the best item though these days actually let's just go to tank items to make it more easy you know magic resistance is armor or both it can be uh -huh. now <coughs> we got into usually if you can look around and just ask yourself questions you know as if you want to go Tormail, this can still be useful against some like basic attacking AP champs like Kale or Gwen, because Gwen does heal. Kale heals to some extent, but mainly to reflect their basic attack damage. So this can be still useful against like AP champs, but also like with the armor part, you want to mainly counter AD champs, obviously, but they tend to basic attack a lot. Um, then you can also like just just basically like ask just ask questions, you know, like what what goes the best? Because from this point, it's just situational, you know. You could go so many of these tank items, but at this point it's just like it's just like situational. It's just like very very situational on kinda like what do you wanna do, you know, like just based on like based on the enemy team, you know, like you could go for so so many builds. Um you could also go wow nice, but I wouldn't really recommend you unless you know how to use it properly switch in between. But at this point, it's just very, very situational. What do you get? But for example, as a very beginner, this is how arguably, you know, like 
full build could look like you know like um <coughs> basically this could be both ways as well this marks no marks this marks would be both ways as well honestly um then let me just like make a full build for you guys as an example but everything is just gonna be situational you know tormir reflection damage anti-heal randomine provides a fat amount of slow to actually like catch those squishies and 30 percent crit damage reduction against crit champs but it's just generally gonna be situational your item sounds it's not gonna be like it's not gonna be all the time the same um, so we got it on versus AP tops. I right, take a screenshot. Feel free to take a screenshot very easily. Um, then we can also put emphasis on some other things as well as AD matchups. <coughs> okay, let's make a new one, new set. Yeah. Same thing. Um, you usually so for example into AD. AD ranged, right? So into AD ranged. Uh, what you want to do is you just get a good bramble vest with a combination of summon AD. Um, this is just a very easy bramble vest. Now, from bramble vest on, you can actually move on and get a iceborne gauntlet. Iceborne can be very, very good at chasing squishies, at uh, sort of disallowing them to kite properly. So, that's a totally, totally fine item that you can go for. First, provide you some haste, some H with some armor. But often you want to get your plated seal caps, after all like too much you don't want to de delay your first item. So you can go either, either Iceborne, or you can also finish your Tormail, but I believe after so many buffs I would just rather go Iceborne instead of finishing Tormail, than maybe later on finish Tormail. Uh, in between you want to get the basic boots as well, obviously basic boots, right, like this. Refillable, maybe I should have added refillable earlier on actually, like this. Like this right <coughs> just to make it even more beginner friendly you can also obviously like get any time refillable on or um in the base uh then basically just want to like ask yourself is it like a crit range champ if it is then you can go for your randomine if it's more of a own hit oriented champion you can finish your tormail but at this point again at this point you don't want to like over itemize into like one champion that you face especially if you are behind you just want to put emphasis on everyone else into the enemy team so you can also like get some items that also synergize with each other or works against the enemy team that up supports your team in some way like abyssal mask because it does amp up the tormias reflection damage it does amp up your damage your teammates damage so you can wipe more easily that vein if you have like a syndra in your team or whatnot because those champions would love that extra sweet 30 percentage pen as an example um <coughs> but i think basically basically you guys got my point with this um now let's move on to uh basically like ap tops so like for example into ap range tops you don't want to get bramble vest because it provides armor the reflection damage is not super sweet into them uh especially because some of them could have sustain into their kit or wave clear so it's not super super useful so into toes usually usually you want to get like a d shield you know usually a d shield start right i should maybe include the shield into each of these um <coughs> and then you want to rush your abyssal mask your abyssal mask is definitely great um then ba basically it's just like mainly like it depends on your matchup at this point but usually like at this point you could go marks but usually into most of like ap range you don't necessarily need marks unless the enemy team ne necessities so only if it's good into the enemy team obviously um at this point you could go swifties marks like any of these could be totally fine depending on the enemy team if you're not like build into your enemy range the plated could be also fine and in, even into like a kale ranged ap right I'll just rename it ap right so it's not so confusing maybe uh it's basically it can actually like reduce a basic attack damage by 25 armor reduce incoming damage from attacks by 12 percent which affects our magic damage as well as an example so that's like very very good to know any of those could be reasonably useful uh when it comes down to your options of boots force of nature super useful against ap range tops that have basic attack dps like kale uh, but usually uh, it depends on the enemy team as a whole because you don't want to build into the enemy champ only <sighs> okay we got this so let's just start a new one 
Did I just start a new one? Uh, scrap. Okay. Actually, how the hell do I even start a new one here? Because usually I don't use this tool too much. Um, okay. So basically against like, uh, let's just rename it against tanks, tanks, uh, tanks. <clears throat> now against other tanks, there are going to be some free matchups where you get to greed on hard steel, like Malphite, but I don't want to really like add it specifically into Malphite or some tanks that you could greed it arguably into, because um, you usually, like generally speaking, uh let's see like it will be more consistent for you if you just like go for like a sunfire into malphite because i swear like this this is a bit more consistent at like pushing your lead at uh, getting ahead faster because it's also cheaper so it's a bit more recommended for beginners but usually i go for for hard steel it, it really depends on your matchup but often it's abyssal mask or sunfire but i would more so lean towards abyssal mask i've seen some people go sunfire but usually you want to go abyssal um then in, again into tanks you don't want to build too much so like when you face a tank if it's an ad or an ap tank so into an ad tank like scion it would go sunfire but it's also fine into Scion, Malphite to actually go hard steel. Like I would, into like very easy matchups, I would greet for hard steel, for damage, HP scaling, then most of your tank item will, will scale off uh, hard steel. So if you already know your matchup, for example into Scion Orn, you could actually go hard steel. Uh, not Scion Orn, I mean into Scion Malphite. Yeah, versus easy tanks, right? You can actually greet for good, good, good scaling. Decent. You're gonna get so many procs on those champs, so you can actually start out with a hard seal. Plus, you can also walk under their tower and get a demolish proc with so much HP from hard seal, without like the tower triggering on you because of your sunfire, because of your what not. So that's very, very important to know. Uh, okay, we got the sunfire, uh, but otherwise you wanna get actually abyssal mask. Second, secondary, you want to get Abyssal Mask into AP tanks, AD tanks, Sunfire, usually Sunfire or Iceborne can be totally fine, depending on what's good into the enemy team in general. So any, either or any of these, or even Hollow Radiance, or how is it called, Hollow Radiance, uh, what the hell is the item called, I always forget this name. Unending despair. So this could be also totally fine as a third item. It just depends like how many melee champs they have, because mainly from melee champs you're gonna get this uh, healing value off uh, in melee combat. Okay. Now Orn versus like AD bruisers. So you can screenshot this as well. Usually marks is your option of choice into tanks, obviously, because. Uh, uh, they have CC, they have AP into their uh, kit, so often this is what you can get as boots of choice. Um, now let's go down to like AD, like AD bruisers, right? So this time it's not ranged, but bruisers. Um, each bruiser is often different from one another, but... Uh, oof. oof, this is a bit complicated, right? So into bruisers, I'm gonna type their exact name off. Okay, so... So versus these specific bruisers, I like Iceborne as an example. So this will allow you to actually have Sheen to deny their scaling to smash them early on. And so once they scale, uh, Fiora does a lot of true damage and uh, Gangplank does a lot of true damage with his basics and whatnot. And um, another Camille does a lot of true, da another, true damage. It's not HP based true damage, but it's still true damage from Camille's part. And, um, you kind of want to have this Iceborne so you can smash them early on to deny their scaling with Sheen. And then you can also just like uh, space them more easily the true damage part of their kits, you know. Because you have this slow. Um, otherwise, if you have Phaser, Sheen to Darius.
you go for Sunfire, it's already here. Or actually just get Bummy, no, no, actually the whole item is not worth shit. Just get like Bummy. Then you can rush your Tormeal, as an example. Like this. Um, but otherwise, honestly as nerfed as uh, Tormeal is, like I would actually consider Sunfire being okay. But I, I feel like it's just based off an item Sunfire, like with the, especially without Heart Seal, it's not that good. So I would just say go Bummy, like go Bummy, but literally like into some champs where it's hard to basic attack, I would go also Bummy into like Jax, even though you don't go Phase Rush. Into some champs you will not go Phase Rush, but you still kind of like want to go Bummy just for wave clearing purposes, because it's kind of non-interactive. And uh, also it's kind of like... Um, Kinda like then uh, rotate for grabs. So even through like Shen is like not super interactive and it doesn't help insanely a lot into him. You still need it for wave clear, so you can actually very easily push. So it doesn't like roams as an example. But I wouldn't literally I wouldn't even finish the whole thingy. Um Even so into Queen, obviously like into Queen actually instead of like Bami you could actually get the Bramble West which still gives you a push, so I would instead go for that. So it's like either or depends which one is a bit more useful. Why? <sighs> and then you can always like include plated seal caps, so this is like most of the times you'll be good into AD bruisers. Uh, a good plated seal caps rush after your first item. Um, but basically, after that point, it's just situational shit, guys. Like, I'm gonna be real at this point, it just really depends on the enemy comp as well, not only, only on the enemy champion. So, I think that's it for now. When it uh, really, really comes down to like the builds itself. Uh, and the runes, like I, I really try to like simplify it uh, for you guys. I think I just also like gonna add like a finished like build piece as well. So I think it's, I guess it's a little bit easier because probably like saying it's situational, but even though it's like really situational, like <laughs> it's like hard to like, I guess it's hard to like get it for me, like completely beginners. So, like, okay, but like what the fuck do I go for then? Because a lot of people can't really. Maybe can't really like decide, you know, so it's like maybe I'm gonna add some of these items just so so people have like a have like a imagination on like what could they potentially go for, but this is like not really consistent, you know. It's not really like a constant you finish somewhere I guess later on, but it's not really like a consistent uh Later on, obviously, you're gonna sell your issue, but this is not like always a consistent build. That's how it's situational it can get. Uh, now, that's it for now. Uh, have a nice day, y'all.